Hi guys, welcome back. I'm all better, no more cold. And I have my garage back. It's an absolute state, but I've got it back. And today we're gonna to do a bit on the engine. So it's about time I started doing stuff on it just to get it ready to go back into the focus. So today it's wiring, very boring, but I'll show you some uh, quick snippets of it. Next episode, because I'm gonna split this into two, we're gonna do the gearbox adapter business because um, that was quite boring as well, but meant lots of time spent working on the lathe. So we'll get that done, and then uh, hopefully the engine will go back in the car and it'll be ready to start up. And I'm buying a welder this month. So, roll the intro, let's go. Okay, it's engine time. As you can see, I've kind of started getting the gearbox off. I've ripped all the horrible plastic stuff off, or as much as I can, off the top end. And um, what we're going to do is get rid of all the wires we don't need and find the wires we do need and see what needs to be done with them. So yeah, there's going to be a lot of stop start in this me trying to work out what's what, but basically all I've got is the engine in front of me. It's plenty solid, safe enough, it's not going anywhere, don't worry. I've got my iPad here with some wiring diagrams on it, a meter, a knife, some snips, and there's bound to be a screwdriver here somewhere, but I've got my toolboxes if I need if I need anything. So first things first, what I've done, like I said, was rip all that horrible plastic stuff off and try and loosen up as much of these wires as possible. Next thing I want to do, I think, is take the inlet off because it, it does hold a lot of... Oh. Hello. Right, where was I? <laughs> um, yeah, I think I'd like to get the inlet off because there's a lot of EGR stuff that I want to get rid of. But I've also got a lack of understanding of, of which bits need to go and which bits can stay. This is a lot messier than what I've seen others manage. On the throttle body, off. Oh. Ready to go back on the car. Oh, it's been here. Absolutely stinking in there. So, perhaps I'll clean this out before it goes back on. Well, we might reutilize this. Oh, and I've got fuel everywhere. Why do you want me? <laughs> right, okay, time to get the wire end over. Where did this one come from? Where did this one come from? I started already. It was the other side of that one, which was yeah. Okay, so I've got my 16 pin um, diagram on the iPad. I'm gonna look for the 16 pin in here. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. It would seem that's the right one. So in here we have where's these numbers? So number one is here. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight is there. Perfect. So we're gonna skip number one, we're gonna go straight to number two because number two is deleted EGR gas temperature sensor. So I'm going to take my snips, I'm going to give myself plenty of room, just in case I'm going to solder it back on. <laughs> and I'm going to cut it, and then we're going to pull the, oh, there we go, only goes as far as here. So we're going to pull that cable out. Next we've got fuel pump controller on number four, not needed. So this one. 
not needed. Snip. Next we've got PE1 on pin place, place the pin 12 on custom plug 1, whatever that means. That is you, so we need that one. This one goes to uh, what I believe is the dash. Oh. Alright, mess this. I believe that's the dash interface, and that splices into that, am I correct? Yes. Next is pin one, two, three, four. Oh, you know what? I just made a mistake. That's the check engine light. <laughs> what a plum. That was the one I was supposed to cut. That one. Any dramas? We'll just we can mark this one up as check engine light. Because I'm an idiot. doing is I'm picking a cable that needs to come out. I think I'm all done on this one now, <laughs> typically. Yes, so what I do is you have to, oh I better plug that back in, so that goes back in. You need to undo this little clip, like so. Then Find the cable you don't need anymore. So we'll pick this second, this yellow one, which is the second in from the bottom. And then we go in there, lift it up, in there, lift it up, and pull the pin. Try again. Hold the yellow one. Get the pin, get into the pin, lift it up, and this ain't working. I think it's something to do with this. This needs to be further up. Like that maybe? Aha, yeah, it needs to be out all the way. Comes out easy then. <laughs> so, same again. These two, 
next to it in there lift it up and click in there lift it up make sure you get out Oh, one of them has come out. Oh, and the other one has as well. Simple. All done. Use a teeny tiny drill bit. You don't have to go out and buy tools, you can make your own. Alright, all done, ready to go in the car. I've got to sort out the bottom bits, I think. I don't know, I, yeah, I've got to sort out the bottom bits because if I show you the... Let's see if I can show what I've got, yeah. So, so the loom comes down here and it goes under here into this big lump, which is basically our battery terminal and some other big plug and then it goes under the front of the engine round to get to the alternator and maybe power steering. What I'm thinking of doing is having it come up and over here and come down the side with some heat protection next to the exhaust like the other side. It's probably going to be the best shout, best solution I think considering the start the motor is going to get a uh, Got a feed, gonna get a feed as well, and the battery isn't in the same place as it's in in the Lexus. So yeah, I'm pleased with that. That's uh, that's much neater. I'll, I'll put all the things back on now, I think, and um, you'll never know I was there. <laughs> so I'm using this diagram on my phone to work out which bits I need to get rid of. I'm basically I'm getting rid of everything that says EGR on it because I run the back of the engine there was a pipe that came from here to here and then came out of here into the exhaust and of course my exhaust is custom made now it doesn't have the joint for this so I basically need to blank off everything that is EGR related so that's what I'm going to do now is take off all the EGR related stuff on this engine that should tidy it up a bit and it also gives me an idea of what I've got to block off. Looks like I broke something previously. <laughs> Bin. So around this side is where the uh, throttle body is. It all looks fairly clean, there's nothing else to come off over here, I think, so that makes life easy. And then this lot of cable is for the MAF, which is going to be downstream somewhere. I think I'm going to try and stick with the side mounted air intake, although I would prefer something out the front or at the back 
Preferably at the front. Makes life a little easier in the car, I think. And symmetry. I like symmetry. <laughs> at the front, we've got this, which is a... Check my trusty diagram. The front is a idle speed control valve. I guess I'm keeping that. I guess the rest of it stays. <laughs> Everything seems to be water cooled on this though, which is which is bizarre to me. Didn't realize they, uh, that everything needed to be so cool. <laughs> so what I'm gonna to attempt to do now is take all this cabling off so I can clean it up a bit. I might take the inlet off so I can get at the starter motor and there's bits and bobs I need to do under there. Um, including cleaning it out because it's absolutely stinking in the V. Clean all this up, I think, so it looks a bit more presentable and then I can actually take into account what I need to block off and put back on. So I think that's what I'm gonna do now. Not the 10 wheel for change. And there's a nut and or bolt in here somewhere. It's absolutely disgusting. There it is, all the way down there. Let's get the start up. Let's just go down there. Just so you can see, look at the dirt in there. Absolutely disgusting. But I gotta get these bolts out to shim them down a bit because the, the plate doesn't fit on properly and that meant getting at the starter motor. And if I'm at the starter motor, I may as well change it already. Ooh, crusty. So I bought this plate off some guy on online. It fits the engine, it fits the gearbox, so does the job. <laughs> I have had previous experience making plates like this and it's not very easy. This one's obviously had quite a lot of work gone into it. Lots of holes, well, the main holes for the engine and then lots of different outside holes for lots of different key boxes, which is, uh, which is nicely done. Touche you ever made one of these. So these bolts need the lathe treatment. They just need a couple of, uh, couple of mil taken off the end. I might go and do that now and then bring them back. There we go, two bolts in, two bolts turned down, and now there's no gap between the engine and the gearbox plate. Happy with that? Fixed. Another small job done. I've had a thought actually. If I ever need to change the start motor, this plate's going to be in the way, which means I'm going to take the gearbox off to get the plate off to get the start motor out. I don't fancy that. But I also don't fancy cutting channels in this to make it easier for me to get these bolts out. I don't know what to do. Okay, that's more than enough wiring for today. Next time round, we're going to do a bit of um, machining and sorting out the gearbox, hopefully. Fingers crossed, it'll all work okay. Uh, for now, I'm going to take you over to the engine to show you where we are. So I'm gonna start on the back of the engine. As I've mentioned, this is my cable management. <laughs> this is where it's gonna plug into the ECU in the car. I've got, will you stop making a racket? I've got alternator and battery cable, sorry, alternator and starter cable coming through here as well. I might move them because I don't know if it's gonna cause interference. We've got bank one stuff for this side of the engine. Bank two stuff coming out there for that side of the engine. I have a map sensor lead with plenty of bits on it, depending where I want to put that over there somewhere. Then we have the igniters coming up the side. I want to get rid of these and go coil on plug, but for the time being, they'll, they can stay. We have down here a uh, aircon cable, as well as an oil pressure cable coming up into the standard sort of stuff. In here, just needs to be made off up through here 
and into the car. And on this side, we have alternator cable as well as the exciter cables coming up here this side. I'll pin them down somehow and into this back cover to make it all nice and neat. I do have two O2 sensors, but like an idiot, I got rid of them with a Lexus, so I'm gonna have to buy some new ones. Moving on to the front, I haven't touched any of this, but it all does need to come out so I can strip off all this old junk and tidy it up a bit. I may end up leaving it because it works, but I wanna end up getting rid of these at some point too, so we'll see. And there's also a few more wires to run for the uh, the pair of boosty boys. So that's it for today. Uh, come back next time, we'll do all those other bits on the engine and hopefully not long after that, we'll start checking things back in the car. I've still got wiring to do in the car, but I don't think I'm gonna film that. That's really boring. Gonna find the right wires, match them together, make it all work properly. Job jobbed. And we'll, uh, we'll be running in no time. Anyway, like, subscribe, do all the business. Thanks everyone, we're over like 100 subscribers now, that's awesome, that's that's really cool. Yeah, so like, subscribe, comment, tell me what I'm doing wrong, tell me what I'm doing right, tell me if you like it. I, I enjoy reading them. It gives me something to do on my way to work. I, I get bored on my way to work. So yeah, just just hit me up in the comments, chat, and, uh, and, and let me know what you think. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.